I'm the director as well of what we call our Biogems Initiative. Uh, NRDC identifies special natural areas throughout the Americas that are subjected to, to specific and immediate threats, and then mounts mount multifaceted campaigns to protect and preserve them. And they range from America's Arctic, uh, where we're in Alaska, where we've been working practically for almost 40 years to try and keep big oil out of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, all the way down to Patagonia and Chile, uh, where we're very involved. A year ago, we decided to name Costa Rica Biogem. It was the first time we actually named an entire country a Biogem. Costa Rica is a pretty small place. It's actually smaller than the state of West Virginia. It's 4.4 million people. Well, when it comes to biodiversity, it's a superpower. We're about a half a million species there all together, roughly about 5% of all the species on the planet, and many of them are found nowhere else. Costa Rica is also an environmental leader. Uh, it's, it's been at the forefront of preserving and protecting uh, uh, its own natural lands. About 20% of the entire country has been put in national parks. We've been very innovative with programs like payments for ecosystem services. They actually give money to farmers to plant and protect trees. NRDC, with the support of our members, uh, started a program called Reviving Rainforest. We're working with food basically to reforest this about 50 hectares of this land uh, and to restore it as quickly as we possibly can for habitat for, uh, for, for, for the jaguars and other creatures. This is a picture of the nursery. Uh, and what's really exciting is that there are a lot of these reforesting uh, degraded lands in the tropics. And what, what Avian Foresight and people with food are doing, they're trying to do it in a way that really maximizes the biodiversity. You can also do a lot of reforestation that maximizes the value of wood. But this is one where we really, the key is really doing it so that you're creating really, really good uh, first rate habitat. Aside from this focus on reforestation and the reforestation project, you know, we are really worried about the potential for large-scale development in the region. And so particularly the potential for building an airport, an international airport, which would draw a lot of new tourists in this area and make this area potentially a place where you have large hotels. There's also concern about gold mining in the area, also concern about gravel, also some potential concern about other agro-industrial uh, activities. And so, you know, NRDC is at this point, and as Ray mentioned, there was a proposal for a tuna farm. When we were down there, we spent a lot of time talking to the local ecotourism operators about the tuna farm. And thankfully, that particular uh, threat has receded. But the, the, you know, what we've seen is that in, in, in the environmental field, unfortunately, there are absolutely no permanent vict vict uh, victories or ultimate solutions. You have to stay vigilant. You have to stay engaged. Quite often, when we get involved, not only in Costa Rica, but anywhere, we don't like to be on the defense of fighting bad projects. We really want to get ahead of the curve and develop policies and programs that really help protect and, and preserve these, these areas. And in the case of, in the case of the OSA, it's clear you, know, you have people living in that area. They have needs. They have desires. They have wants for their family. And so we have to figure out a way to meet those needs, but do it in a way that protects and preserves uh, this remarkable. Thanks.